Hello and uh, greetings from Lisbon. Um, it's a shame we can't all be uh, gathered together in Oxford or London uh, for that matter, but uh, we translators are nothing if not adept at um, overcoming distances and uh, barriers. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about the book I translated and um, the, the, the sort of uh, wider issues that, that, that made me think about. Um, a Loca de Serrano uh, by Dina Salustio was uh, first published in 1998 uh, by Spleen Edisoish in Praia uh, and as such was the first novel uh, by a woman published in Cape Verde. It was published as The Mad Woman of Serrano uh, by Daedalus last year uh, and was the first uh, book by a woman uh, translated into English. Uh, sometimes these firsts are uh, misleading or meaningless, but I think in the, in the case of this book, it, it is significant. Um, it says a lot about a place that it was only 20 odd years ago that uh, the, the first novel by a woman came into being. Uh, and in a way, the book addresses that. It's, a, it's about gender roles and uh, female disempowerment. Um, that it took a further 20 years uh, to appear in English also says a lot uh, about cultural exchange, publishing perhaps. Uh, we all know that ideally more books would be translated into English. Uh, but I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the ones that are, the ones that do make it. Um, in places where there's a developed uh, book industry, uh, publishers, agents, critics, booksellers will ensure that um, foreign publishers hear about good books, good for, for, for whatever the reason may be. But in countries where that ecosystem isn't in place, then um, sometimes uh, it falls upon the translator to sort of play uh, play that role. Uh, and fine, good. I uh, I enjoy that side of things. I like the, the scouting for talent, the, the detective side of seeking uh, hidden gems. Uh, but th this book made me think a bit about the, the responsibility that goes with that. Um, we'll come on to that in a second, but I'll, I'll read a passage uh, to, to, to sort of uh, get us going. Uh, so this is the opening paragraph of the English version of The Mad Woman of Serrano. This is the story of Serrano, a village of 193 souls, including a young mad woman, several infants and three babies on the way. Two of them twin girls, according to the midwife, who was peering through a crack in her warped shutters when she saw a woman's shadow cross the square at the same moment the sun crossed the moon, sending deep vibrations through the valley and playing havoc with time. The relentless wind took advantage of the situation to review, remove the young woman's dress, plucking it from her like a petal from a flower. And before the girl knew it, the ground had gone from under her feet, the sky had disappeared over her head, her arms were dancing through the air, her legs were wading through the clouds, and she was laid on the pungent earth, her hair fanned out in the fresh dew. Now, translators will notice that that's a, a pretty dense uh, paragraph. Uh, there's a lot of words in it, uh, and the subject is, is slippery. It changes uh, quite a few times in what are only two long sentences. Uh, readers will also notice that strange things are afoot, that uh, perhaps we're in a magical place. Um, and none of this is, is easy to, to translate. Um, English uh, likes to do things uh, one step at a time in a, in a particular order, whereas Portuguese is a little bit more flexible, happier to, to meander like, if you will, the, the, the river that flows through the, the valley of Serrano. Uh, and this is a book that's sort of split between two worlds. There's the, the rural of, uh, of Serrano, the village, uh, and those passages are uh, 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 very lyrical uh, and then we have the big city where the writing is uh, a lot more matter-of-fact 
uh, and the, the lyrical passages in particular were difficult to translate. Uh, uh, the sheer number of words to fit in, adjectives, uh, uh, and uh, in, indeed sometimes um, I felt compelled to, to cut one or two to, to, uh, for the good of the text. Um, but if it was difficult to, to translate, it was also difficult to read, um, by which I mean read in a second language. Um, and uh, yeah, we translators uh, consider ourselves fluent uh, in the language we translate from, but I'm not as fluent in Portuguese as I am in English. And um, in the same way that some English books require more careful reading, uh, coming across uh, that kind of book in your second language is, is twice as tough. Um, and I confess, uh, the first time uh, I picked up A Loca de Serrano, uh, I gave up after uh, about 20 pages. I didn't really understand what was going on. Uh, there were a lot of unfamiliar words. The, the magic uh, meant that it, it was hard to sort of make educated guesses, guesses where when I wasn't sure um, uh, and besides I'd taken the book out of the library and uh, it, it was slow going and uh, I was uh, had to take it back before I got a fine um, so that might have been that uh, we wouldn't be uh, sitting here discussing uh, the mad woman of Serrano today but fortunately I uh, I went on holiday to Cape Verde and uh, I saw the book uh, in a bookshop uh, maybe inspired by the, uh, the the magic of the place uh, I decided to give it a second go uh, and this time I I looked up everything I didn't understand in the first uh, few pages at least until I'd got a, a hold on the, the, the thing until I, I, I sort of felt like uh, I understood how the book worked and then you can make uh, your sort of educated guesses when you when you're not a hundred percent sure. Uh, and anyway, soon I was skipping along uh, and thoroughly enjoying it. Um, by the end, though, I, you know, I was aware that I hadn't understood everything, uh, and, and by that I mean the the symbolism, perhaps the, some of the references. Um, and I think um, translators, when we read. A, a, a book in our second language we you know about halfway through we often have a, a, a feeling we really want to translate this and that might be because of uh, the beauty of the text because of the the, the craft of the the, the narrative uh, or a combination of those factors and a, a slight frustration at, at not um, appreciating all of the everything that's happening and wanting to uh, wanting to delve deeper and uh, and sort of uh, uh, study the uh, study the mechanics uh, and uh, and the craft. Um, that was certainly the case uh, for me with this book, and, and and I'm very glad that I did translate it. It, it, it wasn't easy. Uh, those lyrical passages required draft after draft after draft after draft to to make them flow, um, and. Uh, um, uh, it, uh, yeah, it, it, it took a lot of energy uh, to, to get them right, but it, 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 it was very rewarding and it was a, a great pleasure also to, to, to get to know Dina, the, uh, the author. Um, for people who don't know much about Cape Verde, there are a group of islands um, in the Atlantic Ocean, sort of historically, geographically uh, and culturally, uh, stuck between uh, Africa and Europe, um, and, uh, and and a bit forgotten, uh, isolated, uh, and uh, everything that goes with with sort of isolation. Um, uh, by now, uh, the, the country is very um, uh, much part of the African community, but again, as a Portuguese speaking place, and and one somewhat off, it, 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 it sometimes uh, uh, misses out there. Uh, in terms of the conversation, um, so a book translated into English is uh, is significant. Uh, we were invited to Kenya to discuss the book, me and Dina, and, and these things are, are important for, for a writer, for a translator, but also for for the country and its, its sort of cultural uh, output. Uh, 
and uh, and yes, yeah, so all of that was rewarding. As is recognition such as this, uh, the prize, of course, uh, being uh, listed on the Oxford Venom Hill, it, it, it is part of that. Uh, it makes all the uh, all the effort worthwhile. Um, but back to the, the sort of books we 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 translate, and uh, th this made me wonder whether sometimes the the, the more difficult books. Uh, get overlooked. Uh, and I think perhaps they do. Um, we translators would do a lot of work off our own backs, uh, and inevitably, understandably, uh, we sometimes don't wish to overcomplicate what overcomplicate what already is a complicated uh, business. Um, but my uh, conclusion from, from from having stuck with uh, a look at the Serrano is that I'm very glad I did. Uh, and maybe sometimes we do need to delve deeper if we consider translation not just as a as a job but as a sort of a, a contribution to cultural diversity uh, then yeah maybe sometimes we need to to, to make the extra effort um, reading and translating a lot of this Serrano drove me mad at times but uh, I love translating and uh, I love the book so uh, I'm pleased to embrace the the method and the madness